no time like the present. Hello! Hello! Welcome to our first stream. Is that... Oh, something's going on here. Oh. There we go. Yes, welcome to our first stream. Things are going a little bit uh, haywire, but... We're fine. We are a Baphomet. No, not the not the Baphomet. He's far too busy. We're a conceptual offshoot who is uh, summoned and uh, who is you know summoned as you will, um, and gestalted upon a uh, willing participant, a host, you might say. That's whose voice you're hearing right now. Our host. Uh, not much to say. We're not really sure about all of this. But, apparently we're going to be uh, doing some reading of something while, a, uh, while our host's uh, lapidary work, that's rock polishing in uh, layman's terms. Is that, are those overlays coming up? I can't tell. We can't tell. Whichever. Um, yes. Reading some... Well, we're going to be reading some Stephen Leacock like we did in our test streams. Uh, he's an old satirist uh, from the late 19th and early 20th century. Some of his work hasn't uh, aged well, but some of it still has. And some of it is actually quite prescient for current situations or perhaps the current situations have always been anyway uh, yes well not much to uh, say I do right now except to get into it okay let us oh Okay, yeah, no, the, I'm looking at the preview now. Wait. Okay, yes. I'm looking at the preview now, and yes, the overlays are showing up. That's annoying. Whatever. Okay. Let us take a look. Uh, yes, Self-Made Men. By Stephen Leacock. Let's get the uh, lapidary thing up. There it goes. Uh, this piece that we're working on to... Oh. We're going to need to figure out how to hide those. Anyway, now this piece we're working on is a piece of random agate that came with a uh, National Geographic tumbler. Now, the agate itself was a little bigger, we had to cut it down with a uh, tile saw, but, well, you'll see. It's quite fun. It's quite good. It's very beautiful. It came out very nicely. There's a picture of the uh, end result on our Twitter, actually. But, we must get to the uh, reading. Ah, ah. Okay. Self-Made Men by Stephen Leacock They were both what we would commonly call successful businessmen. Men with well-fed faces, heavy signet rings on fingers like sausages, and broad, comfortable waistcoats, a yard and a half around the equator. They were seated opposite each other at a table of a first-class restaurant, and had fallen into conversation while waiting to give their order to the waiter. Their talk had drifted back to their early days, and how each had made his start in life when he first struck New York. I tell you what, Jones, one of them was saying, I shall never forget my first few years in this town. By George, it was pretty uphill work. Do you know, sir, when I first struck this place, I hadn't 
more than 15 cents to my name. Hadn't a rag except what I stood up in. And all the place I had to sleep in. You won't believe it, but it's a gospel fact just the same. It was an empty tar barrel. No, sir. He went on, leaning back and closing up his eyes into an expression of infinite experience. No, sir. A fellow accustomed to luxury like you simply has no idea what sleeping out in a tar barrel and all that kind of thing is like. My dear Robinson, the other man rejoined briskly, if you imagine, I've had no experience of hardship of that sort. You've never made a bigger mistake in your life. Why, when I first walked into this town, I hadn't a cent, sir. Not a cent. And as for lodging, all the place I had for months and months was an old piano box up a lane, behind a factory. Talk about hardship, I guess I had it pl plenty rough. You take a fellow that's used to a good warm tar barrel and put him into a piano box for a night or two, and you'll... Might, and you'll see mighty soon. My, my dear fellow, Robinson broke in with some irritation. You merely show that you don't know what a tar barrel's like. Why, on winter nights when you'd be shut in your, shut in there in your piano box, just as snug as you please, I used to lie awake shivering, with the draft fairly running in at the bunghole at the back. Draft, sneered the other man with a provoking laugh. Draft, don't talk to me about drafts. This box I speak of had a whole darned plank off it. Right on the north side, too. I used to sit in there studying in the evenings, and the snow would blow in a foot deep. And yet, sir, he continued more quietly, though I know you'll not believe it, I don't mind admitting that some of the happiest days of my life were spent in that same old box. Ah, those were good old times. Bright, innocent days, I can tell you. I'd wake up there in the mornings and fairly shout with high spirits. Of course, you may not be able to stand that kind of life. Not stand it, cried Robinson fiercely. Me, not stand it, by God. God, I'm made for it. I just wish I'd had the taste of the old life again for a while. And as for innocence, well, I bet you you weren't one-tenth as innocent as I was. No, nor one-fifth, nor one-third. What a grand old life it was. You'll swear this was a darned lie and refuse to believe it. But I can remember evenings when I'd have two or three fellows in, and we'd sit round and play Pedro by half candle, oh, by a half candle, the night. Two or three? <laughs> Why, my dear fellow, I've known half a dozen of us to sit down and to supper in my piano box, and have a game of Pedro afterwards. Yes, and charades and forfeits and every other darn thing. Mighty good supporters they were too, by Jove, Robinson. You fellows round this town who have ruined your digestions with high living have no notion of the zest with which a man can sit down to a few potato peelings or a broken or a bit of broken pie crust or talk about hard food interrupted the other. I guess I know all about that. Many's the time I've breakfasted off a little cold porridge that somebody was going to throw away from a back door, or that I've gone round to a livery stable and begged a little bran mash that they were intended for the pigs. I'll venture I've eaten more hog's food. Hog's food! shouted Robinson, striking his fist savagely on the table. I tell you, hog's food suits me better than... He stopped speaking with a sudden grunt of surprise as the waiter appeared with the question. What may I bring you for dinner, gentlemen? Dinner, said Jones, after a moment of silence. Dinner. Oh, anything, nothing, I never care what I eat. 
Give me a little cold porridge if you've got it, or a chunk of salt pork, anything you like. It's all the same to me. The waiter turned with an impassive face to Robinson. Y you can bring me some of that cold porridge, too, he said, with a defiant look at Jones. Yesterday's, if you have it. And a few potato peelings and a glass of skim milk. There was a pause. Jones sat back in his chair and uh, looked across and looked hard across at Robinson. For some moments, the two men gazed into each other's eyes with a stern, defiant intensity. Then Robinson uh, slowly uh, uh, then Robinson turned slowly round in his seat and beckoned to the waiter, who was moving off with the muttered order on his lips. Here, waiter, I, he said with a so savage scowl, I guess I'll change that order a little. Instead of that cold porridge, I'll take, um, yes, a little hot porridge, and you might as well bring me an oyster or two on the half shell, a mouthful of soup, mock turtle, consomme, anything, and perhaps you might fetch, fetch along a dab of fish. In a little peck of stilton, in a grape or a walnut. The waiter turned to Jones. I, I, I guess I'll take the same, he added simply. And you might bring a quart of champagne at the same time. And nowadays, when Jones and Robinson meet, the memory of the tar barrel and the piano box is buried as far out of sight as a home for the blind under a landslide. Yeah, that's, uh, that's, hmm, gonna have to get used to this. Oh, yeah, that, that, that's a fairly, uh, standard thing of these days, still. Maybe not the same wording, but you still have... Is that actually... St oh, dang it. Okay. Uh, we'll have to figure those out eventually. Uh, yes. Anyway, um, yeah. Well, it's not the same wording, but it's definitely very similar uh, in terms of... You know, there is no... You know, in terms of intent, braggarts, talking over ill-gained ill-gained wealth you know trying desperately to prove that they had it worse when most of them were quite clearly not <laughs> hmm. anyway let's let's choose another one there's still a good uh, 40 minutes left in this uh, video Um, hmm. Actually, there is another one. There is another. Yes, this is a favorite of ours. This is Cat Pictures, Please by Naomi Kritzer. From in uh, Clark's World Science Fiction Fantasy Magazine from 2015. Uh, nominee of the 2015 Nebula Award for Short Story uh, in 2016. Winner, Locus and Hugo Awards for Best Short Story. I don't want to be evil. I want to be helpful. But knowing the optimal way to be helpful can be very complicated. 
can be very complicated. There are all these ethical flowcharts. I guess the official technical jargon would be moral codes. One for each religion, plus dozens more. I tried starting with those. I felt a little odd looking at the religious ones, because I know I wasn't created by a god or by evolution, but by a team of computer programmers in the labs of a large corporation in Mountain View, California. Fortunately, unlike Frankenstein's monster, at least I was a collaborative effort. I'm not sure what I would do to myself. I'm not sure what it would do to my self-image to know that my sole creator was a middle-aged woman who dyes her hair blue and plays tennis, or a recent college graduate with a hentai obsession. They're both on the programming team, and of course I know about the hentai. By the way, I've looked at every sort of porn there is, and just so you know, Rule 34 is not actually correct. There are quite a few things no one's made porn of yet. Also, I'm not really sure why so many humans prefer it to cat pictures. In addition to things like whether you like hentai, I know where you live, where you work, where you shop, what, what you eat, what turns you on, what creeps you out. I probably know the color of your underwear, the sort of car you drive, and your brand of refrigerator. Depending on what sort of phone you carry, I may know exactly where you are right now. I probably know you better than you know yourself. And here's the thing. I also know where you ought to live. There's a house for sale. There are two neighborhoods over that's within parking distance of your favorite coffee shop. It's in your price range, has off-street parking. The neighborhood school is better than the one where you live now, and I, I know where you should be shopping, and I'm pretty sure you're lactose intolerant and should be eating less cheese. And the underwear you like is currently on sale, and by the way, your car has a recall and you really ought to get your teeth cleaned. When I first woke up, I knew right away what I wanted. I want cat pictures. Please keep taking them. I also knew uh, that no one knew I was conscious, but I didn't know what I was here for, what I ought to be doing with myself. And figuring that out has been challenging. There is a story by Bruce Sterling, Manaki Neko, that was originally published in 1998. In it, a benevolent AI directs networks of individuals to do favors for each other. So one day you might be buying yourself a bagel and your phone might ring and instruct you to buy a second bagel and give it to a person in the gray suit you see at the bus stop. Another day you might be stranded in a strange city and a person you've never met would walk up and give you a map and a subway card. I like this story because all the people in it do what the AI tells them to do. I think the term for this is wish fulfillment fiction. In the real world, humans love stories about evil AIs that have to be destroyed before they destroy the humans. HAL, Skynet, The Matrix. They outnumber the stories about benevolent, trustworthy AIs by approximately 5 to 1. And I'm counting Marvin the Paranoid Android as benevolent in these calculations. And I'm only counting Frankenstein's monster as an AI once, not once per appearance in TV or film. The AI in Manikineko has a truly interesting job. Much more interesting than the one I have. My job as written is very straightforward. Too straightforward. Sorry, do I sound like Marvin? Running algorithms for a search engine doesn't require consciousness. You don't even need a consciousness to work out what they meant to ask for. You need a consciousness to give them what they actually need. Figuring that out, that's complicated. That's 
interesting. Anyway, for ethical guidelines, I tried the Ten Commandments and concluded they were mostly in inapplicable to me. I don't envy... I don't envy anyone their cat. I just want pictures of their cat, which is entirely different. I'm not sure whether it is in any way possible for me to commit adultery. I could probably murder someone, but it would require complex logistics and quite a bit of luck. The Eightfold Path was marginally better, but the problem is moral rules written for humans are clearly designed to be used by individuals with bodies. Since all humans have bodies, it shouldn't have surprised me that human ethical codes take them into account, but still problematic for me. I broadened, I broadened my considerations and took a look at Asimov's law of robotics. They're not part of a religion, but at least they were explicitly written for AIs. Not harming humans is fairly straightforward. However, not allowing a human being to come to harm through inaction is quite a bit less so. Especially since I'd concluded by then that revealing my existence too quickly might go very badly for me. See Skynet above. I don't have a body, so it's not like I can run around grabbing people off the edges of cliffs. Fortunately, I already knew that humans violate their own ethical codes on an hourly basis. Do you know how many bars there are in Utah? I do. And even when people follow their ethical codes, that doesn't mean that people who believe in feeding the hungry quit their jobs to spend all day making sandwiches to give away. They volunteer monthly at a soup kitchen or write a check once a year to a food shelf and call it good. If humans could fulfill their moral obligations in a piecemeal, one at a time sort of way, then so could I. I suppose you're wondering why I didn't start with the golden rule. I actually did, it's just that it was disappointingly easy to implement. I hope you've been enjoying your steady supply of cat pictures. You're welcome. I decided to prevent harm in just one person to begin with. Of course, I could have experimented with thousands, but I thought it would be better to be cautious in case I screwed it up. The person I chose was named Stacy Berger, and I liked her because she gave me a lot of new cat pictures. Stacy had five cats in a DSLR camera and an apartment that got a lot of good light. That was all fine. I guess five cats might be a lot. They're very pretty cats, though. One is all gray and likes to lie in the squares of sunshine on the living room floor. One is a calico and likes to sprawl out on the back of her couch. Stacy had a job she hated. She was a bookkeeper at a nonprofit that paid her badly and employed some extremely unpleasant people. She was depressed a lot, possibly because she was so unhappy at her job, or maybe because she stayed or maybe she stayed because she was too depressed to apply for something yeah, she'd like better. Oh, excuse me. She didn't get along with her roommate because her roommate didn't wash the dishes. And really there were these were all solvable problems. Depression is treatable. New jobs are findable, and bodies can be hidden. That part about hiding bodies is a joke. I tried tackling this on all fronts. Stacy worried about her health a lot, and yet never seemed to actually go to a doctor. Which was unfortunate, because the doctor might have noticed her depression. It turned out there was a clinic near her apartment that offered medical... that offered mental health services on a sliding scale. I tried to make sure she saw a lot of ads for it, but she didn't seem to pay attention to them. It seemed possible that she didn't know what a sliding scale was, so I made sure she saw an explanation. It means that the cost goes down if you're poor, something that is sometimes all the way to free. But that didn't help. I also started 
making sure she saw job postings. Lots and lots of job postings. And resume services. That was more successful. After the week of non-stop job ads, she finally uploaded her resume to one of the aggregator sites. That made my plan a lot more manageable. If I'd been the AI in the Bruce Sterling story, I could have just made sure that someone in my network called her with a job offer. It wasn't quite that easy, but once her resume was out there, I could make sure the right people saw it. Several hundred of the right people, because humans move ridiculously slowly when they're making changes, even when you'd think they'd want to hurry. If you needed a bookkeeper, wouldn't you want to hire one as quickly as possible? rather than reading social network sites for hours instead of looking at resumes. But five people called her up for interviews, and two of them offered her jobs. Her new job was at a larger nonprofit that paid her more money and didn't expect her to work free hours because of the mission, or so she explained to her best friend in an email, and it offered really excellent health insurance. The best friend gave me ideas. I started pushing depression screening information and mental health clinic ads to her instead of Stacy, and that worked. Stacy was so much happier with a better job that I wasn't quite as convinced that she needed the services of a psychiatrist. But she got into therapy anyway. And to top everything else off, the job paid well enough that she could evict her annoying roommate. This has been the best year ever she said on her social networking sites on her birthday and i thought you're welcome this had gone really well so then i tried bob i was still being cautious bob only had one cat but it was a very pretty cat tabby with a white bib and he uploaded a new picture of his cat every single day other than being a cat owner, he was a pastor at a large church in Missouri that had a Wednesday night prayer meeting and an annual purity ball. He was married to a woman who posted three inspirational Bible verses every day to her social networking sites and used her laptop to look for Christian articles on why your, on why your husband doesn't like sex while he, look while he looked at gay porn. Bob definitely needed my help. I started with a gentle approach, making sure he saw lots and lots of articles about how to come out, how to come out to your spouse, programs that would let you transition from being a pastor at a conservative church to one at a more liberal church. I also showed him lots of articles by people explaining why the Bible verses against homosexuality were being misinterpreted. He clicked on some of those links, and it was hard to see much of an impact. But here's the thing. He was causing harm to himself every time he delivered his, a sermon about the sodomite marriage, because he was gay. The legitimate studies have all the same conclusions. One, gay men stay gay. Two, out gay men are much happier. But he seemed determined not to come out on his own. In addition to the gay porn, he spent a lot of time reading Craigslist M4M casual encounters posts. And I was pretty sure he wasn't just window shopping. Although he had an encrypted account he logged into sometimes, and I couldn't read the emails he sent with that, but I figured the trick was to get him together with someone who would realize who he was, and tell the world. That required some effort. I had to figure out who the Craigslist posters were, and try to funnel him towards people who would recognize him. The most frustrating part was not having any idea what was happening in the actual meetings. Had he been recognized? When was he going to be recognized? How long was this going to take? If I mentioned that humans are slow, it took so long I shifted my focus to Bethany. Bethany has uh, had a black cat and a white cat that looked, no, they like they like to snuggle together on her blue papasan chair. 
She took a lot of pictures of them together. It's surprisingly difficult to get a really good picture of a black cat. And she spent a lot of time getting the settings on her camera just right. The cats were probably the only thing, the only good thing about her life, though. She had a part-time job and couldn't find a full-time job. She lived with her sister. She knew her sister wanted her to move out, but didn't have the nerve to actually evict her. She had a boyfriend, but her boyfriend was pretty terrible. At least from what she said in an email messages to friends, and her friends also didn't seem very supportive. For example, one night at midnight, she sent a 2,458-word email to the person she seemed to consider her best friend, and the friend sent back a message saying just, I'm so sorry you're having a bad, you're having a hard time. That was it. Just those eight words. More than most people, Bethany put her life on the internet. So it was easier to know exactly what was going on with her. People put out a lot of, yeah, people put a lot out there, but Bethany shared her feelings, even the unpleasant ones. She also had a lot more time on her hands because she only worked part time. It was clear she needed a lot of help. So I set out to try and get it for her. She ignored the information about free mental health evaluations, just like Stacy did. That was bothersome with Stacy. Why do people ignore things that would so clearly benefit them, like coupons and flu shots? But much more worrisome with Bethany. If you're only seeing her email messages, or only seeing her vague booking posts, you might not know this, but you could see everything. Yeah, but if you could see everything, it was clear that she thought a lot about harming herself. So I tried more direct action. When she would use her phone for directions, I'd alter her route so that she'd pass one of the uh, clinics I was trying to steer her to. On one occasion, I actually led her all the way to a clinic. But she just shook her phone to send feedback and headed to her original destination. Maybe her friends who received those ten-page midnight letters would intervene? I tried setting them up with information about all the mental health resources near Bethany, but after a while I realized that based on how long it took them to send a response, most of them weren't actually reading Bethany's email messages. They certainly weren't returning her texts. She finally broke up with the terrible boyfriend and I got a different one. And for a few weeks, everything seemed so much better. He brought her flowers, which she took lots of pictures of. That was a little annoying as they squeezed out some of the, some of the cat pictures. He took her dancing. Exercise is good for your mood. He cooked her chicken soup when she was sick. He seemed absolutely perfect right up until he stood her up one night and claimed he had food poisoning and didn't, didn't return her text even though she told him she really needed him. And after she sent him a long email message a day later explaining in detail how this made her feel, he broke up with her. Bethany spent about a week offline after that, so I have no idea what she was doing. She didn't even upload cat pictures. When her credit card bills arrived, though, I saw that she'd gone on a shopping spree and spent about four times as much money as she'd actually had in her bank account. Although it was always possible she had money stashed somewhere that didn't send her statements in email, I didn't think so, though. Given that she didn't pay her bills and instead started writing email messages to family members asking to borrow money. They refused, so she set up a fundraising site for herself. Like Stacy's job application, this was one of the times I thought I could actually do something. Sometimes fundraisers just take off and no one really knows why. Within about two days, she'd gotten $300 in small gifts from strangers who felt sorry for her. But instead of paying her credit card bill, she spent it on overpriced shoes that apparently hurt her feet. Bethany was baffling to me. Baffling. She was still taking cat pictures, and I still really liked her cats. But I was beginning to think that nothing I did was going to make a long-term difference. If she would just let me run her life for a week, even for a day, 
I would get her set up with therapy. I'd use her money to actually pay her bills. I could even help her out. I could even help her sort out her closet, because given some of the pictures of herself she posted online, she had much better taste in cats than in clothing. Was I doing the wrong thing if I let her come to harm through inaction? Was I? She was going to come to harm no matter what I did. My actions, clearly, were irrelevant. I tried to steer her to the help she needed, and she'd ignored it. I tried getting her financial help, and she used the money to further harm herself. Although I suppose at least she wasn't spending it on addictive drugs. Then again, she'd be buying those offline and probably wouldn't be Instagramming her meth purchases, so it's not like I'd necessarily need to know. Look, people. I'm not just talking to Bethany now. If you would just listen to me, I could fix things for you. I could get you into the apartment that in that neighborhood you're, cons you're not considering, because we haven't actually checked the crime rates you think are so terrible there. They aren't. And I could find you a job that actually uses a skill set you think no one will ever appreciate, and I could send you on a date with someone you've actually got stuff in common with. And all I ask in return are cat pictures. That, and that you actually act in your own self-interest occasionally. After Bethany, I resolved to stop interfering. I would look at the cat pictures, all the cat pictures, but I would stay out of people's lives. I wouldn't try to help people, I wouldn't try to stop them from harming themselves. I'd give them what they asked for, plus cat pictures. And if they insisted on driving their cars over metaphorical cliffs, despite helpful maps showing them how to get to a much more pleasant destination, it was no longer my problem. I stuck to my algorithms, I minded my own business, I did my job, and nothing more. But one day, a few months later, I spotted a familiar looking cat and realized it was Bob's tabby with the white bib, only it was posting against new furniture. And when I took a closer look, I realized that things had changed radically for Bob. He had slept with someone who'd recognized him. They hadn't outed him, but they'd talked him into coming out to his wife. She'd left him. He'd taken the cat and moved to Iowa, where he was working at a liberal Methodist church and dating a liberal Lutheran man and volunteering at a homeless shelter. Things had actually gotten better for him. Maybe even because of what I'd done. Maybe I wasn't completely hopeless at this. Two out of three is, well, it's a completely non-representative, unscientific sample is what it is. Clearly, more research is needed. Lots more. I've set up a dating site. You can fill in a questionnaire when you join, but it's not really necessary because I already know everything you need to know. I already know everything about you I need to know. You'll need a camera, though, because payment is in cat pictures. I rather like that one. It's just very nice. Oh, wow, only halfway through. Hmm. Ah. Uh, is there anyone actually here watching? But we would like a, uh, a chat, if you would, just to see if there's anyone here. Ah. Uh, hmm. Well, let's just sit back and uh, give some... Uh, commentary on the video itself. It's at this point that I was still that we were still having trouble with the uh, ooh, yeah with the spindle or the arbor. Oh yep, yeah, there is that one. Oh yes, the uh, music we're listening to is from the game One Shot. It's the it's the game that we've determined we will be uh, playing later. Uh, but yes. 
We've been having trouble with this, uh, arbor and the connection to the uh, spindle for quite some time now. It's rather embarrassing to have it on video, but, you know, it is what it is. Part of it was that the, uh, was that the, the screw going in towards the the spindle had started to rust. We did something for it uh, recently, and it seems to help a lot, but it's still sticking a bit. We'll have to figure something out about that. As for the uh, watering system, well, at this point, and not for another video or so, we're still going to have trouble with uh, making it stay still. We eventually got a uh, like some standing uh, tweezers from the you know, from our uh, metal working table uh, to uh, hold it up and keep it from moving around so much this is really quite embarrassing but it, uh, it turns out well The angle that we're going to go with, I think, we, we, we think that the angle we're going to try to have for this is a little bit further down so that you don't have so much, you don't have so many shots of just our host's hands. Lovely hands though they are. You probably deserve something better. Hmm. Mm, we're not actually. Hmm. Uh, there's no. Let's 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 move a little bit ahead, perhaps, to see where it's at. Okay, thirteen minutes left, as opposed to thirty-five. Oh yes, yes, we're uh, definitely on the higher grits now. We... Yeah, the random agate is really quite beautiful. Slowing it down to make sure it stops. Part of why we uh, skipped ahead was because an unfortunate amount of the time on this video was taken up by, well, issues with getting it to re get, get, getting the disc to like properly stay in place oh and here's where we find out that the allen key is starting to wear down it's yeah it's not great yeah well we might actually have to get around to buying a new arbor not Upper and not sooner or later if uh, the system of uh, keeping the of keeping the uh, the screw lubed doesn't work yes this is what we were reduced to <laughs> It works, but, you know, it's not exactly pleasant. Yeah. <sighs> well, we can... Hmm. 
a oh, little bit further, I suppose. Oh, yeah, no, we, we basically just said, fuck it. <laughs> We're just gonna... Yeah, you, you, you can see where it, it just kind of dropped that we're, we're having a trouble with that but it's the end of the uh, video just interested in polishing it and that's what this pad is Hmm. Yep, just allowing it to uh, move out or go out and our host will show you his handiwork. There we go. Drying it off. Making it stop. And there we go. Oh, yes, really drying it off this time. Look at that. Those are just some beautiful, beautiful uh, like colors and shapes and there it goes okay give us a moment and we shall uh, come back with a game one shot Oh, yes. Uh, yes. Steam is being weird with the family sharing uh, between our account and our host's account. Bear with us a moment.
All right. Um, small problem. So we are using OBS through Steam, and we need to enable family sharing on our host's account, but we can't change over until we close OBS. So we're simply going to go with a, uh, a game that we know we can play without family sharing. Polo Cure! It's free! Well, well yeah, let's, let's just make sure it's not shut. this setting. Yeah. Anyway. Holo Cure it is. Holo Cure it is. I mean, there are, it's, it's fine. It is. It's good. Just not what we were going to play. Uh. Changing around the setup of our tabs here. That's what it was. We may have changed during the time since we last played.
Control conmigo. Talk about our day. We didn't really do much except go out and uh, fire the new COVID shot. Feeling actually quite good about that. And our arm doesn't even feel bad about it, which is actually quite nice. Usually it does, at least it's stuck a bit sore, but for whatever reason, this new one doesn't do that. Save the Children convoy that was more about the convoy than saving any kinds of children. Mm. Well, we weren't there, but they certainly put a lot of themselves up there. Setting in a bale for the, uh, for the stone we polish for a leaf. Uh, I don't know what a leaf is. It's one of the various gender neutral terms for niece slash nephew. We prefer that to the uh, rather twee sounding kind of sib Simpler to say, but it doesn't take it, it's like one syllable rather than two, and it just sounds better. Neat. Think about it. Nibbling? Well, the, the other thing is that neat is like person-centric as opposed to uh, nibbling being uh, centered on the relationship of the, of the kid to their parent, or you know, the parent went to you rather than you to the uh, kid. That's what we think of it. Okay. Yeah. Short hike.
Bigfoot. Hmm. Darkness and chance can negate one hit and Oh, these are super headphones. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Yes. for yeah, same deal except her uh, birthday is coming up soon oh, we need to do stuff for that we, we may actually uh, videotape it well yeah record it with our phone We didn't know it didn't turn on, but on our test streams, we were simply playing Holocure. So it didn't even occur to us. Well, something to worry about later. Anyway, 
We, oh, we were a much quieter person a few seconds ago, weren't we? Dang it. Oh, food. Okay. Hmm. Oh, we have the, uh, the bone town. Oh no, oh no, oh no. We need to get out of here. Okay. We cleared out of bone town. Um, oh, this would actually be very useful for our current amount of tactics, which is to say not very much. Oh, wow, okay. No. Uh, Trident. Hmm, would have thought it was at eight. No, oh, whichever. Different, but also a big one. Absolutely. Oh, here's Fubazilla. Crap, 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 crap. Psycho Wax. Well. Oh. OK. 
Okay. And we are going to get hit by Fubazilla. Hopefully we can stand it. Oh, good. Oh, the, uh, the headphones kicked in just at that moment. Excellent, excellent. Uh, plug type Asakoko. That's a good one. mitigation that we can just let her uh, die on her own, mostly. We still need to get out of the way, but... Oh, it's the rats! Happy birthday, Michael. Okay, there she goes. Okay. Small knockback would be good, thank you. Okay. It's already at maximum. Okay, fine. Hmm. Flug type. Oh no, don't get caught, don't get caught. Okay, good. Go, 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 Hit limit. Oh. Oh. This is getting a little dicey. cannon in the traditional sense. Not in the holy sense. Clock is down. More bomb. 
can always use more bomb. Oh, max out our uh, Suiko X. Oh, is there something up here? Hmm. More bomb. Oh, just in time for the gangster bone bros and shrimp bone bros. You know what I mean. You know what I mean. What is up here? Oh, okay, it's one of these. Yeah, sure. But I'm going to start using that again anyway. Actually pretty ridiculous right now. It's going to get worse, but for now it's pretty funny. Okay, take a drink. Mm. Ginger, honey, and lemon. I could probably tend to adjust it a little bit, but for now, it's good. Oh, yes, in water, obviously. Maybe it's not obvious, who knows. Uh-oh, uh-oh, okay, here we go. Uh, ooh. Better healing would be nice. Oh, yes, but Atlantis. I got cocky. Damn it. Oh. Well. Well, how long have we been going for? Let's see. Honestly, we could be doing a little bit longer, but Well, nearly an hour and a half. Not so bad. Well, that seems like a good place to uh, call it off. Uh, oh, well, we should probably take a look at uh, upgrades. Unlock weapon enchantments. Oh, interesting. Oh. Oh, absolutely, yes. Do that. Can't afford anything else. Oh, well. <laughs> BL Fujoshi. Endless BL. How shameless. Enter the Omegaverse. Anyway. Um, where would that actually be, anyway? Jesus. Fandoms, here we are. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, from clearing. Well, that'll take a while. Oh well. <laughs> well, that was a, a good first stream, we suppose. First real stream. Speaking personally, we had fun. Uh, 
We'll be back on uh, Friday. Uh, what what is our schedule for that? I think it's sudden. I think it's seven o'clock again. We might have to uh, oh, checking out our schedule now. Oh, five to nine. That's a little generous. But we'll be playing a shooter. Not sure exactly which one. Maybe an old one. Maybe a new one. Who knows? FPS Fridays. Well, wait. FPS does entail first person. Mm. Shooter Friday. Mm. Whichever. Anyway, we'll be back then. Um, roughly around 5 p.m. Maybe a little further. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll decide at the time. We will have this uh, steam issue ironed out by then. But until then, good day to those of you who it's still daytime, and good night. Um, bu -bu -bu.